Now you may be wondering why it looks so dark and why it looks so early. That's because it's dark and it's early. Today we're going to find out just how you set up a championship golf course for some of the best players in the world. Let's do it and let's do it now. Hi everyone, James Robinson here. If you're new to the channel and it is your first time watching my content, first of all guys, I'd like to warmly welcome you to the channel. And I say warmly because it's freezing this morning. We are here in Abu Dhabi and I'm not going to tell you what time it is, but it's pretty, pretty early. Guys, if you do like this video, make sure you leave us a like and hit those comments below, guys. If you could ask a golf course superintendent who works at one of the best golf courses in the world a question, what would you ask him? Because... Good morning, Clinton. Morning, how are how you? How are you? I'm fine, mate. How are you? Good. Thank you. you very much for having us this morning. Really, really appreciate it. You so, said it was cold. It's, it's not it's, too bad. You've got a coat on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Clinton, this morning we're going to show the guys how we kind of set up the golf course. Obviously, we're here at Abu Dhabi Golf Club. Yep. It is the week of the, as you can see all around us, the HSBC Abu Dhabi Championships. First of all, Clinton, obviously, so my course at home have five green staff. Yep. Green staff, um, how many guys do you have here working this week? Uh, today, we have, uh, well, this week we've had a few extra, but we're about uh, 85 guys today. 85 so. guys. So, Dave, if you're watching this, you need to do the job of 85 guys. I mean, you don't do your own job, but that's, that's fair enough. I do struggle with the names, though, sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can imagine 85 names might get a little bit of testing. So, it's very, very early. It's still dark. I'm, I'm trying to get my excuses in early, yep. Clinton, to be fair. But the greens have already been cut how many times? Uh, today they've been double freaky, so that means that they've been cut four times in total uh, <laughs> in the same direction. Because we're wow. Bermuda Greens, yep. uh, we just try and go up and down on the same, just yep. so we, again, for uh, smoothness of roll and okay. evenness of cut. Double freaky. So I'm playing here on Monday and the sponsors day. Do I need to be worried? No, you're fine. Good, good. Now, Clinton, there aren't many flat spots on these greens, are there, Abu Dhabi? No, no, there's a few subtle movements all the way through them, so... They look a bit flat, but they, they have a lot of subtle movements, yeah. We found a fairly flatty spot, would you say, here? Yeah, no, I, um, I spent a bit of time and marked my flat spots on all the greens yep. uh, prior. Used the, the, the caddy book, uh, which saves me a couple of hours. <laughs> um, but yeah, we mark a couple of spots where we find it flat, um, and then we keep an eye on them as the, as the week progresses. Okay, so, so what we're doing now, what's this? So this is kind of one of the first things we're going to do yep, this morning. So this is obviously a stick meter. Um, and this is a, a common tool that we use. Uh, we'll go around, we'll do the first two or three greens, start at the putting green. If we need to make adjustments, uh, we can ask the team to do that as we go along. Yeah. So um, yesterday our green speed was 12. Today we're looking for 12 and a half um, as we progress, which is pretty quick for a Bermuda green. So. Very quick, isn't it? What's the quickest you've had them, Clinton? Would you know? Yeah, well, look, they can peak up at 13, yeah. but you know that's really putting some stress on the green. That's so. enjoyable for most golfers, isn't it? Yeah, but I mean that's that's the aim. You know, we, we've got the <laughs> the best players in the world here, um, and we're trying to give them the best possible services that we can. Awesome. So show us how we how we go through this, Clinton. Yep. So here we have our mark. So I bet so many people at home are wondering as well. You've heard of stimp reading. You've heard of it's 12 on the stimp, it's 11 on the stimp, Augusta's a million on the stimp, whatever. And you wonder what it is. What is? How do you measure it? This is exactly how you measure it, isn't it? Yeah, it's not rocket science. Um, we just have, uh, well, the 12 is in 12 feet. So that's the, the first one. Yeah. It's based on, uh, on length. Where the, the slot there where the ball sits on, when we lift it to an angle, it releases itself. Okay. And it's all about evenness. On the way back, we do the same. So we're hoping that's rolled 12 and a half feet. Yeah, and we'll do it on the way back. It's my distance control, was that consistent? <laughs> we're aiming for the torch. That's pretty flat. Oh, not bad at all, Clinton. Not bad at all. And then to measure, yep. this is three foot, the standard three foot. So, okay. three, six, nine, 
12 and we're fraction under 12 and a half feet so Perfect. pretty good for this morning pretty happy nice one So Clinton, we've had actually some bad weather this week, haven't we, in the, in the whole of the UAE, really? Yeah, look, uh, hard to believe, really. So I was I was speaking to you yesterday off camera, and you mentioned about how much rainfall you have. Greenkeepers love to talk about how much rainfall you have. <laughs> Usually, I can imagine it's not a conversation you would have very often, unless it's lack of. So do you want to just talk us through how much you had, but then also how much you would expect to have in your everyday week, month, year? Is it, yeah, um, over. 48 hours, uh, we had uh, 85 mils of rain. 85 mils of rain, that's, I mean at home we get that in an hour Clinton, so I don't know what the big deal is. No, but, but look, uh, I've been in the region for 11 years and I think if I added up the rainfall for those 11 years, it still wouldn't go close to the 85 mils, so. So basically you've had a decade's worth of rain in a couple of hours. Isolated decade, yeah. Um, so guys, we're gonna put on screen now a couple of pictures that Clinton took and put on social media of the golf course two, three days ago. Yep. And as you can see, it was wet. It yeah. was, um, I mean, that lake wasn't there. No, it was. The, 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 lake, the lake was there, but it was very wet, wasn't it? Yeah, look, we had a, a dedicated team of staff that worked 24 hours a day, pumps, uh, squeegees, uh, just non-stop working. Yeah. We've still got three or four bunkers out to play today, and today's the second day of uh, practice. Okay. Uh, they'll be back in play and, uh, and open before uh, lunchtime, so the guys have done a phenomenal job. It's been yeah. awesome. Should we go and take a look at these bunkers, Clinton, and see how you might look at trying to get them back course ready? Yep. Yeah, Perfect. let's go. Let's do it. So this is the 8th hole, Clinton. This is a bunker that's not in play. We've got a team of boys working on this. Like they're working very hard as well. Do the pay rise, Clinton, for me. <laughs> <laughs> so these guys are actually working on the faces. Yeah. So one of the things we work hard on is trying to uh, make sure we don't get any plugs on the faces. Yeah. Uh, so the guys are trying to brush those up, make them nice so and smooth. So these aren't rakes that they use, are they? If I zoom in, that's a brush. Yep, that's just a broom, just to make a nice smooth face. But you will see in the bottom of the bunker, it's quite churned up. Um, so my, my amazement here, can we get in here? Yes. My amazement here is how much sand's actually in the middle of here. If I just look at that, that's covering the ankle nearly, Clinton. That. That's plenty of sand. Yeah, so we've had to really rotivate this to try and get the air circulation to dry it out. Like this thing was underwater completely um, two days ago. Yeah. So we've been pumping it out. Uh, and then we just, to get it ready for today, we had to air it out. So that's a, getting a, a rotary hoe here, lifting the sand up, uh, letting it dry, and, and to this morning it's really dry. So yeah. we please, we'll come back in here with the sand pro, level it out, uh, make sure it's compacted a bit, because as you can see, it's too soft. Yeah. Um, and then get it open, ready for this afternoon. But to your point perfectly, we can see a ball mark here, and that's not plugged, that's run down into the bunker nicely, and then the players obviously taking it out and, and carrying yeah, on. Yeah, actually this morning, that's me walking around with Is some it? golf balls, throwing <laughs> it at it, so, and you didn't but, know that. But the so. story was so good. <laughs> <laughs> it's unbelievable to think that, and again, a picture of this bunker a few days ago is on the screen now, that this was so wet a few days ago, because it's bone dry now, and it's basically tournament ready. But me, as soon as it's, it's properly, as yep. you said, compacted. Yeah, we've got a compacted level, um, and get it all nice and, uh, and pretty and fancy. So are these generally problems, Clinton, that you would see most years? Is there always something that crops up? I know we spoke briefly last year, didn't we? And there was, yep. there was, a, there was a, a separate issue. And is there always something every year, generally, does it? Yeah, look, as soon as you think you've got it under control, uh, you get you get fined out otherwise. And it's yeah. definitely not the case. So, look, it's kept the boys on their toes. As I said before, the boys have been phenomenal. Um, it's really good to see them come together and work really hard and, and, and get the place presentable. Yeah. And now we're looking forward to some nice sunny weather. Absolutely, uh, we, we are. can take the jackets off <laughs> yeah. and um, you know, enjoy watching the golf. Yeah, I think that's what we're all looking forward to doing. One thing that I'm getting a, a gist of here is, Clinton keeps mentioning, the boys keeps mentioning team, massive team effort this week, isn't it? It's not just, it's not just kind of five head guys such as, such as yourself. Yeah. It's, it's the whole team has to work towards a common goal, don't they? Yeah, look, it's, it's tricky. We have a few guys here that have only been here for a couple of weeks that come in and help for the tournament. So it's organization, communication is, is massive. Uh, Simon Reese, the, the assistant here, the senior assistant, he's done a phenomenal job. Uh, organization, jobs, schedules, timings, buses, lunches, mm -hmm. all these small things you don't think about, have all got to be set out, planned, 
and, and executed. Because hungry staff aren't hard working staff, are they? Yeah, the boys like their lunch and their <laughs> breakfast, that's for sure. But they deserve it. Um, as I said, we couldn't be happier. The guys have worked really hard. Um, and uh, that, that's all you ask for. So Clinton, earlier on this morning when it was dark, we saw a guy walking around the room with a pogo stick, was it? Something yep, correct, basically? yep. We use a, a pogo uh, moisture reading yep. uh, stick here. I was joking when I said pogo stick, Did I you? what it was. Yeah, so uh, every day the guys go out, uh, we have a grid system on the greens, the probe puts the information up to the cloud and then it comes back in, on um, an app on our phone or on our computer and we can obviously track uh, temperature, moisture, um, salinity, all in that first two inches of the probe which is uh, really it's a necessity for a tournament like this. Yeah, so you get that consistency throughout the entire green. Yeah, and it, it also allows us to do the practice, how much yeah. moisture we want to put on. Uh, we also have our thresholds. Mm -hmm. uh, if we get too dry, then we might scalp. So being able to see that information on our phones uh, allows us then to get more detailed with our, with so our work. Can we have a look at this information, what you've got, Clinton? Yep. So I just go into the app uh, and it tells us some moisture. Uh, this is hole five, um, and so then we can also look at uh, where we want to get some moisture on on the green here. Hole number seven, this is, is pretty unique. The red zone is a part of the green that was done three years ago. Because of that new profile, it dries out a lot quicker. Yeah. So we know we need to come and, and do some extra water there tonight. Perfect. So Clinton, we've looked at green speed, we've looked at the bunkers that are now being put back into play. Talk to me about how you get these green speeds. How do you get them so quick and so consistent? Yeah, well, it's, it, well, it starts six, 12 months ago during renovation well, times. Yeah. Um, we really work on the, trying to get as much um, clean profile in there as possible. Yeah. But on the day-to-day -day basis, we work with the agronomist, uh, the European Tour agronomist, and work on a plan. So okay. as we said, uh, today the greens were double freakied. Double freaky, I love that. Double, hashtag double freaky. <laughs> Guys, comment below, double freaky, why double not? Double freaky. Um, everywhere has its own name for it, but for here it's double freaky, but we actually roll the greens first. Yeah. And so that helps get So you any, roll before you cut them? Yeah, that helps get rid of any pitch marks and any scalping. Um, then we come double freaky, then we roll again. Doesn't mean no pitch marks, like that, is it? Because every golfer always repairs a pitch mark, don't they? This is correct, so don't say. <laughs> so Clinton, before we get too close to this and nobody can hear what we're talking about, what, what are we doing? What's this? Why is it going sideways? <laughs> yeah, so now we've got the uh, Eduardo there doing the, the second roll of the greens. So the greens have been rolled, double freakied, final roll. Uh, then we've got the guys there ready to um, clean up the holes yeah. and put the flag in after him. Uh, then we're, we're ready for the golfers. So Clinton, just before we do have a roundup, obviously you've showed us some fantastic things on how we would set a golf course up a couple of days before a big event. For me, what's your biggest challenge maintaining a golf course like this over 12 months? Obviously you've got to set it up for your general public, your people who pay, how much is a green fee here usually in the in season? The, in the peak season, uh, what's it, what, maybe 150, 200 pounds. Yeah, so it's, it's a very expensive golf course. It is a premium golf course, so it, you kind of pay what you get for, but then obviously you have to get it ready for the best players in the world every year for the last 12 years, is it now? Yep. Uh, no, this is the 15th tournament. 15th, sorry. 15th. 12 years that HSBC have sponsored it, isn't it? That's where I got that from, I think. Might be wrong. What, so what is the biggest challenge with that, Clinton, would you say? Um, the age of the golf course, the, the demands of players, the demands of, of, of everyone involved in it to try and make it bigger and better every year yeah. uh, at an aging golf course. Okay. I mean, I guess before we do have a roundup, we, we mentioned this off camera. It's very much like going to an exam this week for you, isn't it? If you've not done your prep, if you've not done your homework, if you've not done your revision coursework, whatever you guys want to call it, you're going to struggle if you're going to try and cram it all in the week, aren't you? Yeah. Uh, technology's come a long way with agronomy. Uh, we're lucky enough. We get the um, we have our um, agronomists uh, at True Golf. Yeah. Uh, we do our do our tests, soil tests, instrument tests, water tests. We're able to put this information together. We get to work on our plan, uh, a plan for our renovations. Yeah. Uh, how much organic material we need to remove, how much fresh sand we need to put into the profile. So all this information uh, is able to be obtained more and more every year, mm -hmm. um, and we and that allows us to 
to try and push the barrier, try and push the bar higher every year. So I must admit, I've been coming here for the last probably three or four years now, and it's, it's, it just seems to get a little bit better every year. So, I mean, obviously, thank you for having me, but also a massive well done for what you're doing. It looks incredible, and I can't wait to go and play it on Monday because last year Clinton didn't play very well. So I feel, I feel it's, like I'm, it's redemption year this redem year. It's definitely redemption year. year. Clinton, thank you so much for having us, mate. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you thank for you coming for your time, mate. Guys, I really do hope you've enjoyed that. If you have, make sure you do hit those comments below. Also, leave us a like if you enjoyed that video. If you've not subscribed, guys, already, what are you doing? Come on, hit that subscribe button, guys, if you haven't already. Make sure you stay tuned for more fantastic content this week from Abu Dhabi National in association with Troon International. A huge thank you to the guys at Troon for getting us out here. Really looking forward to what the rest of the week holds. Apart from that, guys, I guess I'll, um, I'll see you tomorrow.